recording. Uh, welcome to episode number 31 of the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. I am your host, Triple J. Joining me is my co-host, Dr. Games 101. Yes, hello, people. <laughs> uh, um, we got a couple... Uh, we got a couple, um, we got a bunch, we got a bunch of things to talk about, uh, for this episode, so I guess we'll just get right into it. Um, the first one, uh, eFootball from Konami, um, formerly Pro Evolution Soccer, is the lowest rated game ever on Steam. Mm, interesting. They, um... They is sitting at a point nine out of a possible ten. That bad. <laughs> um, I, didn't see, I didn't see the results that bad. It was overwhelmingly negative, yes, but not not like zero percent type of shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, nine percent to be honest. Point nine percent. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I got some of the reasons. Um, arms on players flop everywhere. Um. Players will intermingle during gameplay if they collide. Um, audience looks like The Walking Dead. <laughs> and there were inv visible models during lineup. Now, you said you didn't see the video, so I'll explain this one. I think it's um, one of the six minute, it's a six-minute preview, right? No, it wasn't a preview. It was, I think, Yang Ye um, showed the video. Okay, because so I um, saw it on Steam about two or three days ago, and it looked good at first the way they show, showed that their material. But the strangest thing is that when I heard from Young Yeah and or Angry Joe or or Hills versus Babyface, I'm not sure which one, uh, they said that oh, it's it just looks all floppy looking like you just said, and they had like faces like turned into like zombified shit. And it was crazy. I was like, what the yeah. hell am I looking at? <laughs> yeah. Um. Like, uh, one of the players, I forgot what his name was, uh, they compared his real-life model to his model in the game. His model in the game, his eyes are bul bulging out of his head. Um, and they, the thing is, they had the lineup. I, now, I don't watch soccer, so maybe this is, ha um, maybe this is what happens for every game. Uh, they had the five players from the team, and then, like, some guy with the headset all on the same sideline. Okay. You see... You see, one player, two player, empty space, empty space, uh, player number three, and then a guy with the headset. Then the camera pans out so you can see the whole line. Yes. And you see the, like, empty space in between the two sets of players. <laughs> and, like, they're all holding hands like this. So the two players on the end, between the two invisible players, look like they were holding thin air like this. <laughs> Um, they really did a number on that game, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I thought uh, everyone says WWE 2K20 was a dumpster fire. This is even worse. <laughs> Hell, I think it's even worse than the 1998 video that came out. I don't know what to call exactly. I, I remember the, 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 the score. It says point, 1.5 out of a 10. And I, I'm not sure if it's a football game. Or something we're going about pro sports or whatever. It's from the Game Pro magazine from 1998, a 1998 edition. And I wish I could still have that magazine, but I threw it out by mistake. So, but yeah, memories are right there. And that, that that was the worst back then of the 20th century. Now, this is do you remember what century. month? Do you remember what month in 1998? March. It's like in March 1998. Uh, okay, I'll see, I'll see if I can find uh, the name of that game. It's called Game uh, Pro magazine. They used to be around until like 20. 12, Game Pro Magazine, March 1998, worst game. Uh, let's see. Uh, let, uh, let's see. Retro Mags. I, I, this is this is like a long shot. I don't remember the game itself. Just the the score. That's how bad. And that's how bad it was. I couldn't remember the game. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't find any information on the game. It would take a lot of time to find out. But, we'll yeah, so, one. so this, so, yeah, um, um, but the thing is, it was even worse. Like, uh, they have, like, this, uh, loot crate that you can buy, but.
But the thing is, like the player that you would get in the lo in the uh, loot crate or deal, mm -hmm. will be in the game till November. Mm -hmm. So if you buy that like loot crate now, it's basically useless for a month. I see. That sucks. That's why I don't really want to spend too much on loot boxes and uh, excessive DLC because it was worth. I don't mind DLC, like you know the Halo threes, um, map packs and. Uh, stage packs, stuff like that, extra campaigns, that's optional right there. And as long as you let people have the option to play those maps, that's fine. But when you force people into doing all these requirements, like, oh, you must download this DLC to play the game still, that's, that, that's very unfair on, on, on my end, because I spent $60 for games like like Halo or uh, Time Crisis, well, Time Crisis 4, but it was the out for BS3. That type of stuff, so it's kind of like, you know, what the hell? I don't mind DLC that much, um, because, um, the only problem with me is I was usually, before I started selling games myself, I always cared about beating the game as fast as I could, so I could get as much as I could from GameStop when I sold the game back. Um, and I usually would miss out on DLC that way. Mm. Um, but, yeah, uh, DLC, uh, I have no problem with it. Because it's basically there to extend the game. I really think Madden should do that uh, for roster updates. If you know, make the D make it a roster update for DLC as DLC, and but make people buy the game if they want to try out the different modes that they're putting in there. Because you know, uh, well, I don't want to talk about Madden right now, but. Uh, <laughs> And we're still talking a lot about Madden over the last few weeks. But the thing is, uh, you know, as much as we like to rag on Madden, they have ideas to keep, you know, they have, a, they keep having ideas. Some might be good, some might be bad, but they have ideas to make it more than just a football simulator. Mm -hmm. um, but this, this is just basically lazy programming of saying, uh, we'll just release what we want now, and we'll add it in later, and we'll, everything else we'll add in later, maybe, when we feel like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, not too many people feel like playing an uh, unfinished game. You think you think a company like Konami would know better? Now, this is for Konami, of all places. Konami's more of a... They're more, they're more for, like, you know, like games like Metal Gear, and Death Strand, and those type of stylish games. Not for pro sports, really. It's just... I don't see them doing pro sports as much. They're particularly which is one thing, but this pro sports games like hockey and football, nah, that's not them. Yeah, well, Pro Evolution Soccer, they've had it for a long time. Um, they were trying, but they're trying to compete with FIFA. Mm. You can't, um, you can't release a finish. You can't release an unfinished product if you're hoping to compete with a franchise like FIFA. Yeah. I don't care if the game is fun to play, is, is free to play, because even if it's a free game, people aren't going to come back to play it if it's, if it's unplayable. So, yeah, we knew, uh, I think we all knew eFootball, which is what they were calling it, was going to be atrocious, and Konami did not disappoint on that front. Very atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else to add, or time, or move on? Well, I wanted to play the game before the the um, the, uh, the podcast, but I was busy with my uh, my doctor. Uh, I had a, something to do with my with a chiropractic practice, and, and uh, you know, and I was I was in bed for like three days straight, so I I screwed up my schedule a bit. So so sorry if I couldn't get to it right the second. Okay, I didn't I didn't play the game either. I just watched. You know, a lot of times it, I wouldn't have time to play these games. I just read. Uh, reports or watch videos mm -hmm. um yeah i wasn't i wasn't gonna download eFootball even for and I, now i wouldn't download it if you paid me to <laughs> well it's free so i mean if you pay me like five bucks to play it i'll do it well like, if anyone out there i guarantee you like hey pay us five bucks a month we'll play the game that you want us to play right james i mean right triple j you know yeah why not <laughs> i'd be like this sucks but if it's a pc not hold up a pc games I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out the OBS still, but, you know, for me, it's like, you know, if you want to play a horrible game like, let's say, 
uh, Sonic Hero. What's it called? That? Not Sonic Heroes. The, the, the Sonic uh, CD game, if I remember correctly. That's Sonic the, CD. If I recall correctly, that was that, that was the worst Sonic game of all time. No, the worst Sonic game of all time is Sonic on Xbox 360. And what's that one? What's it called? Just Sonic? Just Sonic the Hedgehog. Really? Yeah. That's the only uh, it's, it's, it's gotten a nickname of Sonic 06, but it's, oh, okay. the real name is Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so, so CD is the one for the Sega CD. Yes. Alright, so I'm, I mixed up on the title. Okay, so the 360 definitely... That, that's the one that, if you want to play that, I can play it in the 360 and be like, God damn it! That's stupid! Because like, I heard that the screen was so small, like like the way the Sonic moves, it, it, it the screen it flew itself off the handle. That badly. It went important to, to the 360. That might be, that, that, yes, at the same, but also at the same time, uh, they had other problems. Like, for example, um, the story was cut consistently full of plot holes mm -hmm. um, so the story was completely inconsistent with what was going on in Sonic 06 also um, and also the game was just not fun right and um, so yeah Sonic 06 uh, that's I, I've heard is the worst game some people also say Sonic Boom buys a lyric for the Wii U is um the worst game ever um but dr the curse who joined us on stream one time he's played both games i think to completion and he said uh having played both sonic 06 is still the worst all right the worst of the worst sonic game of all time hmm. yep <laughs> and now and now we got one of the worst sports games of all time from eFootball. <laughs> So, time to go on. Yes. Um, Konami, uh, more Konami news. There are possible remakes of uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, Silent Hills, and Castlevania. Now, we had heard of the Metal Gear Solid remake, but there's been, like, no news of that. And now, these are, all, these are all rumors also, so don't, so there's no guarantee that these uh, remakes are going to appear in the next two, three years or whatever. These are just rumors at this point. Right. But the thing is, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 and um, Solid Hills, if they do remake those games, uh, I heard that other part, other companies want to help Konami with that. Unfortunately, Konami uh, would be working by themselves if they did a remake of Castlevania. Imagine Castlevania turning out like eFootball did. <laughs> if they do that, that'll be fucked up because <laughs> the, I, I know that there's an HD port of Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 together in a pack. Yep. I just bought it last week on my payday. I bought the Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 uh, HD port for the 360, the Castlevania of the first five games of Castlevania for the 360, and I think I bought... Um, Another uh, Watch Dogs double pack, which is the Watch Dogs 1 and 2 together. All for 25 30 bucks. That's it. So. But that's not bad. Um, I have seen the 2 and 3 HD upgrade of Metal Gear Solid um, for PlayStation 3, but that, that package also came with Peace Walker, uh, which was a PSP game originally. Mm -hmm. Um. Watch Dogs, I like the first Watch Dogs, I've beaten that, I never, I didn't like Watch Dogs 2. Um, what's, and the Castlevania games that you said you got, which ones were those? They were the first five, Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3, uh, not sure about if it's called Castlevania 4 after that, but definitely the first yeah. three I have already for the 360, uh, version. And they, re oh, okay. they, cause they released on the 360 years ago, back in 2010, 2012. And I heard of something like that where they released for the... Because I've been hearing about Metal Gear, for, Metal Gear Solid for a while with the HD ports. But the Castlevania, they started as early as 2012 to release that to the public uh, as a remaster or HD style type of game. So I'm not sure what to call it. A remaster is more of an HD quality, what I saw the pictures of. Because I always saw the, the screenshots 
and a trailer. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get just to play that year because of my sleep three days straight. So it's like I was that much in pain from all my med medical pra medical procedures. So it's, you know. so hopefully by that next week I'll record it and I'll by next podcast we'll be to do a little little small review of the matter if you want. So. Yeah, so uh, back back to the um, rumored remakes. You know, um, I, I'm kind of tired of hearing about these remakes that are rumored, especially with Metal Gear Solid, because first it was Metal Gear Solid's going to be remade, now they're jumping all the way to 3. I get it, a lot of people hate it too. Um, but I'm just like, you know, if we're going to keep, keep hearing about these remakes, give me something. You know, I'm just I'm just tired of hearing. Oh, this game's gonna be remade, and then two years down the road, it's like, where is it? Well, we could say the same with Final Fantasy VII remake, because back in 2015, they released a trailer, and it took them four years later to make a new trailer up up to date what's going on with the game itself. So there are possibilities that it may take up to five years for a remake of something for the next gen, gen console, which is the PS5, the Xbox Series S and X, you know. It's, it's all it's all up for the possibilities, you know. Keep it your fingers crossed, right? So yeah, well, but my my point is, why would you jump? Like you know, say they 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 said they were going to remake Metal Gear Solid. Okay, you know they wouldn't. Normally, a company wouldn't jump to their next project without having a definitive finish to their previous product that or project that they announced. But, you know, now we're hearing Metal Gear Solid 3, it's like, wait a minute. You didn't even come, tr you know, you, nothing came through with Metal Gear Solid. What, what's the story on that? Yeah, it, it does seem weird to put the 3 before the 1. I would rather have them take their time. What happens is that if they took their time to do 1, 2, and 3 together as a trilogy remake, that I will buy for the PS5 alone before. Because I already got Fall Fantasy said remake, you already have... Uh, the, the Nickelodeon brawl that might be for the PS5 as well. So you're accumulating games for people to buy later on in the future when the shortage of chips starts to you know re return back to normalcy and the supply of chips for the game consoles. Because now I'm hearing that there's a shortage of all sorts of electronics and systems and, and services going haywire now. And it's not yeah, it's, it's, it's not just it's it's not just computers. I mean, even cars they're having. Uh, shortage of chips on cars that you know ha that control well like these new cars anyway that have like all these um you know dashboard uh menus and everything they're having a shortage of chips on those i mean everything's basically um there's basically a shortage of almost everything oh yeah you know i'm just lucky that at least in my area there really hasn't been a shortage on food Surprisingly, too, my, my area, too, but New York City, because New York City, we're a city, so we rely on the outskirts, the outside, like upstate New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware. Uh, we have our own distribution plant within uh, my town, Jamaica, Queens, but that's just only for kind candy and milk, pretty much, and that's for distribution. But other than that, we also have, you know, upstate with the, the milk supply, the milk farms and stuff, so it's... It's just getting, it's getting to be a shortage, you're right, but uh, that's something that become too chaotic and too uh, desperate, you know, to get Nothing too desperate, at least yet. Yes. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy uh, living down here. Um, orange, I have oranges and blueberries growing in my backyard. So if worst ever came to worst, at least I'll have fruit, you know. Yeah, oranges and blueberries, huh? <laughs> All right, you're yourself an orange blueberry uh, pie. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be able to use eggs in the pie, so I don't know how well yeah, that would taste. There, there should be all you know, those not eggs, not egg pie shells, or yeah, I look around, but it's expensive though. I bet that should have the non-GMO, gluten-free, non-egg, veggie base. Should they don't yeah. have something like that soaring on the internet? Because that's the only way you can do it, right? Because there's no supermarket that has. Well, I never had pie. Egg. That's the thing. What's that? I never had pie. Of any kind. Really? Yeah. No blueberry pie, raspberry pie? Nope. Not even a little meringue pie, no? Oh, man, nope. you're missing out. That, 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 
Yeah, tell me about it. I've also never had waffles or pancakes for breakfast. No, pancakes? Okay, waffles is one thing, because I think it's a bitch to, to maintain. But the <sighs> pancakes should be like, mm-mm, you want to eat like ten of them one time. They have <laughs> eggs in them. I know, I know. But and another thing, I never, I, never, I never had eggs for breakfast. This feels like some sort of like uh, veggie-based type of uh, dairy, but like veggie-based type of pancake mix for you. I guarantee it's out there for you. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that because also, well, first off, I don't know how that. I don't know how that garbage would taste. Yeah. Secondly, I'm not even sure if it's available down here. And I can Amazon. Amazon has everything. Yeah, Amazon also with inflated prices too. Depends on which one, because if you go for the cheapest DVDs or the cheapest uh, candy, they'll sell for one for ninety nine cents and then one move for like three, four, five bucks. And if you get it before, like, within a few hours, it would increase in price. And after when you yeah. buy it, it's not increased too much, but it's still a fair amount of price to, to buy it from still. It's something that's stupid, Amazon, where it's like you buy a, a DVD for, like, let's say, five bucks, and it goes up to like 25 bucks within a few days. That I don't like that, you know. That's very, that's very I, grimy, you know. I've actually, I've actually never experienced that, because, like, if I buy something on Amazon, I just buy it right then and there. I never leave it in my cart for a few days because, you know, what if they're out of stock when I go back to to actually buy it? Yeah. Um, but back to uh, Konami's uh, possible remakes, um, you know, I really, but again, everyone's wanted Silent Hill since uh, play, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One came out. Definitely. Uh, when they released that Silent Hills uh, demo. Um, I never got So it'd be nice. If I can't say this though, I never got involved with Silent Hill games. Never did. I see really. I see trailers of it on TV or on online through the Xbox Store, or whatever. But never got a chance to play a tr the trail the, the original trilogy of Silent Hill, let alone any Silent Hill game. So I haven't played the trilogy itself, but I played um I played like one or two games. Okay. Um, never. But I never got far in them. Also, um. But, you know, again, uh, I'm, with this whole eFootball fiasco, I just have no faith in Konami putting out a quality product. They cut back a lot of staff over her over the years, too, ever since Metal Gear Solid 5 was released. Well, I should say, what well, Metal Gear Survivor was released, excuse me, the, the zombie game, so. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so, um... It's all right. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I just have no faith in them. And that's what you get when you release uh, crappy products. And, I, you know, like, like, again, tying it back to eFootball, if that's what you're going to release as a free-to-play product, how do I know you're going to put any more work into a product that you expect people to pay for? Yeah. Look how they kicked Hideo Kojima out of the company. And then again, the recognition in the, in the following Games Awards that year. Right. Was it 2015 or 2016 with the Metal Gear Solid 5 game? You know? Yeah, I think Especially. Jeff Healy, uh, I think Jeff Keighley even called him out on it. On, uh, called out Konami for doing that. If I remember the story. Yeah, these companies, they don't have no respect for their workers. I mean, I'm not trying to say that the company that cannot do strict business, like the same goes from, that, from the book, business is business, you know, and death of a salesman, but come on now, like, Ko Kojima is like a god in the gaming industry it's, itself for how many decades, especially since Metal Gear Solid 1, so you have to give the guy props that he did a good damn good job Metal Gear Solid 1, even if the today's younger gamers don't look into that shit, how, how, how bad the graphics were in their perspective, but in our perspective as a study and above, we're like, Hey, we love this game. It, it's the best damn good game at one of, of its time. You know, and you gotta, let, you gotta just drop fucking uh, Kojima like a rock, like a piece of trash. You know? Yeah. And then Konami wonders why they have such bad, uh, such bad um, PR about them. And bad actors and workers. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you, their last Metal Gear Solid game is gonna be the. It's gonna be worse than Survivor. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so 
So they're going to do this HD uh, remake of uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 along with Metal Gear Solid 1. I hope the third one will be messed up, but the first one will be the best one, second best. At least that's just behind that of Twin Snakes, you know, something like that. So that's how I look yeah. at it like that. I hope they'll do a good job at least on the first one. Well, uh, do you have a, do you feel what Castlevania might be like if it's made total uh, completely in house in Konami? Well, they did a good job with Castlevania from the screenshots I saw uh, when I bought the the, the, the bundle pack um, from the Xbox Store. Um, as far as with this PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series, PS5, you know, scenario, you know, we're not sure. It's uncertain. But you know, if they did a good job with the 360 um, versions, I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll do that. They'll do something slightly better, because for the last what, at least what, seven years, we've been seeing like horrible gameplay or game quality of games. But before they were released, they were considered to be the best of the best because of the presentation of the games. They were in HD, 1080p, or it's not 4K. There were 60 frames, about 120 frames per second. They have like, you know, ray tracing like that of the Cyberpunk 2077. We saw all this on, on uh, at the E3 um, videos over the seven, eight years. And all of a sudden, when they release it, on, officially on, on the Xbox store or the PS4 store, they just, this it's basic. It's basic graphics, basic everything. Like, they lied to us. And after all this constant lying, I'm not gonna keep buying. I'm gonna stick with my old games. That I still haven't played in years yet. I, st I still have the, um, the the Sega collection I bought for the PS2. It's three years ago, four years, I still wrapped up my pile of games next to me. That's how many games and DVDs I have, and movies and sports and such, you know. But it's it's ridiculous on how Konami guys like companies like Konami, businesses like you know, like that of like say EA, Activision. They just they, they, they just took took things for granted over the years, and now it's like a blizzard. I mean that's like a, a, a horrible case of itself. I mean hell, I, I, if you and I were to get together with a thousand of people, we could buy out Blizzard's stock if we would get a chance to. So I only, I've only bought like a dollar worth of stock the other month, but if we get like fucking like a thousand people buy like fucking. Ten stocks per person, that'd be great. <laughs> it, would, it would increase the value, and over time we sell like like it is and make money. You know, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, it's it's these companies are destroying their own reputation. Yeah. And if they destroy their own reputation, you know, they can do whatever they want. They want to kill their company, kill their company, but don't expect people to buy you. Get, but don't all of a sudden be like, why aren't people buying out games? Mm -hmm. Well, if you destroyed your own reputation, why would anyone trust you? You know, why would anyone trust the quality of the products you're releasing if everyone, if you've destroyed your reputation? Yeah. All right, um, moving on. Um, another game that was a disaster uh, was Diablo 2. I heard that the servers were messed up the first day it was released, right? Yeah, um, people are told their characters are already in an online game when they aren't. Uh, people had their characters deleted, and the game would crash among starting up. Mm. Um, there, uh, um, who's behind the Diablo 2? Is, is, is that Bethesda. Blizzard? Bethesda, I believe. Oh, Bethesda, okay. Um, it did it's sound like Bethesda's actually trying to remedy the situation. But again, it would be nice if these situations were remedied before the game was released. Yeah. Um, I want to hear your opinion. What do you think of this Diablo 2 disaster? I'm sorry, it's Blizzard Entertainment that was developed by... Diablo, huh? Diablo 2 was developed by Blizzard Entertainment. Oh, okay, Blizzard. Yes, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I think too much of that Fallout 76 game when it comes to Bethesda. <laughs> so what do you think of these problems? Um... Well, it's obvious that the company itself is going, for the last year, at, at least within six months, has been going through a, a dissolution 
unnatural and in a natural but also unnatural state because of so many like people quitted the jobs they're leaving the transfer to another another company uh, they found losses to the company, so they're losing money to make sure to maintain the, the, the servers properly and accordingly. So it's a gradual, slow decay and faultiness with the company. So sooner or later, someone's going to buy out or some per people going to buy out the stocks that are very cheap, I'm sure, over time. Not sure when, but you know that's a possibility. Um, that's just a that's business aspect. But the, the company itself may falter within a, at, at the most two years from now. It may be out of business by then, by the 2023, 2024, altogether. File for bankruptcy, at least. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, when you release a game, I mean, you know, it's one thing if, like, players just couldn't sign on to a game, you know. Okay, servers are messed up, they go down from time to time, you know, that that's normal. But, I mean, for people to have, like, their characters erased, uh, for people... Um, what was the other one? Um, oh, the game wouldn't even start up right. It would crash. Hmm. I mean, uh, again, I, I must ask, are these games tested before they're released? They're supposed to have game testers. Sure they're supposed to, but, uh, but you know, I mean, what? Are, are these testers finding the problems and the company saying, ah, leave that in. They They won't notice. <laughs> They're too lazy lately for the last several years. <laughs> before, I have to say, before 2014, 20, right before the Halo Master Chief Collection came out, like, beforehand, the games were good were upon its release, most of them. And there's usually, like, here and there straggler of bad games, whatever, or bad multi games. But now it's something very frequent. Like, no yeah. one's not, no one, they're... The, the, the developers, or at least specifically the group of developers in each of these companies, no matter how big or small they are, they're losing their ability to the the the, 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 the make focus and to, to have dedication to their work. And if they don't have that kind of dedication to their work, and they feel like they have to be rushed all the time, it's going to be a shitty product after a while. I have no problem with these, like, I, like um, it's been said before, if these developers need more time, they should be getting the time they need. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd much rather a game either A, not be released at all, or be released late, instead of being released broken. Yeah. Because, you know, once the servers go down, um, and somebody, say, finds a, your game on a disc, and if it was released a rent, uh, originally in a broken state, it's going to be in broken state on that disc because there's no servers to download patches and that's why before the digital copies came to be after xbox 360 and beyond uh before then it, it was about making sure the product is steady and consistent good and it's a, it's a good it's a good te it's quality tested prior to exit exit on the on the disc because they know that if they, if they don't fix it right away before the final product they're gonna have problems trying to sell it, and they're gonna redo it over like No Man's Sky did, and it's gonna just lose a lot of money in the long run. So, yeah. yeah, No Man's Sky. You, you could people can say, well, they turned it that around. Yeah, that's a way of occurrence. The whole reason uh, people are impressed with No Man's Sky is because no one was expecting that game to turn around and be what it what uh, players were hoping it would be uh, when it first launched. <laughs> You know that's that's not that's not the uh, that's not the status quo for games that are released in a bad state. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So uh, another game like just like I mean it's weird. Uh, we started off with eFootball and Diablo Two is not is it's not really not much better. Um, it just makes me remember the first time I heard about games being released like this. Um, I think it was Street Fighter for, like, PlayStation 3. Okay. They were basically releasing the online mode, like, on a disc. And everything else was going to be added in later. But, oh, yeah, the whole reason, but the whole reason they were doing this is they wanted to have the online mode ready for, like, um, for eSports. Mm. So they just put that online mode on a disc. They didn't even have an arcade mode. And they just sold in stores so people on esports teams could start uh, practicing. 
yeah, the, the, the fighting game, the, the arcade game, uh, the arcade mode in, in fighting games is like the bread and butter or the backbone of the of the games. I like that out Tekken, Street Fighter, uh, Dead or Alive 6, Killer Instinct even, you know? It's yeah, I'm, I mean, if you want to add a story mode instead of an arcade mode, um, I'm fine with that too, if, especially if you can unlock characters during the story mode. Mm -hmm. But you can't just unlock, you just can't give us one mode and be like, okay, we're going to patch everything in later. Just, you know, yeah, you know what? If a company says, oh, we're going to patch in things later, I'll buy your game later. That, I wonder how, um, I wonder how, if, if people spoke with that, like that, with their wallets, I wonder how, um, many of these bad practices of releasing games before they're ready would continue. Mm -hmm. Alright, uh, ready to move on? Okay, I guess you are. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting an answer. Um, <laughs> so we spent like the... Uh, we're actually halfway through the subject, so this might be a short podcast. In, uh, I don't think we're going to go two and a half hours like we did two weeks ago. Um, but um, I do want to talk about an actual good game. Because we've been trashing games uh, basically this whole podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, so on Monday, I was scrolling through Facebook like I normally do. And I found this advertised. I saw this uh, sponsored advertisement. It was for a video game called WWE Champions 2021. Now um, the game, I was I clicked on it, hoping it was something I could play. I thought I'll click on it, but it's probably gonna say you know I have to download it to my phone or whatever. Surprisingly, no. I could play it right on my computer. Uh, what happened is I started the career mode. Uh, it gave me the rock to start out with. Um, I started NXT, and I start wrestling matches. Now, how do you wrestle matches? Uh, you would see your you would see your wrestler come out, uh, then your opponent come out on the bottom half of the screen. Then the top half of the screen is like the matchup in the ring. The bottom half of the screen is a game of Bejeweled. If you ever played Bejeweled three on Facebook. Okay. And basically, how you perform moves is by having a uh, is by basically play. It's a turn-based game, so you get a turn, your opponent gets a turn, and basically you match up three of the same um, shapes or yeah shapes, I guess you would call them, and your opponent and you would do a move. You build up moves, then you could do uh, then you can do the signature. You hit the signature, you can do a finisher. And, um, so I was the lock, because that's who they gave me. Um, I won a few matches, I defeated John Cena, I unlocked John Cena. Uh, they gave me a free loot crate. I don't know if it was because, like, my match was really good, or, like, it was a really close match, so, like, you know, my match got a good rating. Yeah. I somehow got a free f loot crate. They s basically, it was just crates, you know, passing by, and it says, stop the... You know, when I want the crates to stop, you know, hit the stop button. So I hit the stop button. Uh, it stops on a certain crate. Crate opens up. I also have Roman Reigns. So that's my team. I got Rock, the Ro I got the Rock, Roman Reigns, and John Cena uh, as characters I can use. And the whole game basically, um, like say, uh, like say you match up five in a row instead of three in a row. Yeah. You'll do a much stronger move than if you only had matched up three shapes, oh, okay. horizontally or vertically. Hmm. And basically, as you do these moves, you're um, trying to build up to your finisher. Hmm. And um, it's actually a good game. Um, I was going to record video for it, but I didn't want to uh, do a video. Maybe, maybe I'll play it a little bit on stream if this does turn out to be a short podcast. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, I looked at like the roster list. Um, and the thing is they're adding wrestlers to this thing almost every day. Cause on Monday I had three wrestlers in my group. I had 101 left on lock. Wow. I played, uh, for the, I played, uh, either yesterday or 
Thursday um, to get footage for the podcast. Um, now I had 115 on wrestlers to unlock. Mm. So uh, now they did. Uh, they did have advertisements like they had a zombie edge that I could um, that I could buy if I wanted to spend money on it. But you know, for a free to play West, I didn't buy it. But for a free to play wrestling game, it's not so bad. You know, I was expecting something really, really uh, subpar. But I can't say anything bad about it. It's actually not so bad. Is it something I would play like two, three hours on end? Probably not. Is it something I would waste 10, 15 minutes on here and there? Sure. Because I used to play Bejeweled all the time like 10 years ago. Hmm. Obviously, it's a so, Candy uh, Crush. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so obviously it's oh, Candy Crush. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh. Sorry about this, guys. What? Sorry about this, guys. Just trying to take care of something in this household. So in the meantime, yeah, the WWE Champions 2021, huh? I never knew they actually had a Facebook game, for the matter of fact. Pretty interesting stuff to play later on, sometime this week or this weekend. Hey, nothing. My dog yelped, and my mom wanted to know what was going on. Uh, he almost got stepped on. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, they caught him up on the bed, so that, mm -hmm. that won't happen again. Um... But anyway, back to WWE Champions 2021. The only uh, the only um, criticism I can give is that uh, the game has like a outdated roster. They have a lot of wrestlers that were released earlier this year. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, with you know, at the same time, you know, if they had like a, if they have a bunch of legends that I haven't unlocked yet, no one would complain about that. So, I have to say, you know, WWE Champions 2021 on Facebook, I don't know if they're still promoting it or if it was like a one-day thing, but I saved the link so I could play it, and if and I like it. Uh, have you ever played, like, any of the games on Facebook, like Bejeweled or <laughs> any of the games on Facebook? Might be thinking I'm sad, this is not weird, but I actually play a game called Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, what kind of game is that? It's like a point-and-click uh, action-adventure type of uh, situation where it's like you build up your uh, reputation in the village and you, you bless others or you help uh, John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And you'll see like these events. Put, not, it's not gruesome or bloody or whatever. And this and it show like, you know, events that just that you read the Bible, like hey, the book of Exodus, the book of Genesis. Uh, John the Baptist blessed Jesus Christ, and then Jesus Christ go on this nice, you know, prayer situation where you bless others in the meantime. So, um, you also like cut down trees and collect like food and uh, gold and other supplies for yourself and for your village. I haven't played a game in about a couple of years at least, but before I did, before I stopped playing it, I was like, okay, this is not bad. I played it for a good. 15, 20 minutes at a time. That's how good it was. And uh, it may not be the best game ever, obviously, but, you know, it's good to see from an visual, audio-visual standpoint from, from rather being a Bible, and for, for the kids, at least. So if you have a kid, a child, or uh, you know, a son or daughter, you know, that's into not reading as much, but you get them to understand about the, the Lord, or about Jesus Christ or religion altogether or Christianity. This is a good this is a good game to go go towards. Yeah, so uh you know, and like I said, I played Bejeweled back in two thousand eight, um until it lost its uh appeal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um these games on Facebook I don't think any of them is something I would play like hours on end, like something I would do a stream on. But they're fun distractions just to kill 15, 20 minutes, you know, like a pick-up-and-play game. Oh, yeah. If, if, right. I had, if I had a better smartphone performance, 
or, or, or uh, upgrade to a new smartphone, uh, I would definitely download the Facebook game of uh, Jesus Christ and play that for a few minutes on the train or on the bus or something. So, right. But I usually okay. play. But but if I but if I had to carry something like a, a large package or some or a few things with me, I would definitely bring my Game Boy rather than play Tetris on that game. I still have my Game Boy Color. The sound's not working as much or very well, but I can still play the game itself. So I play Tetris whenever I'm on the go. Yeah, whenever whenever I have to, uh, I really the only time portable games come into play now, um, since I don't have a commute anymore, is like if the power goes out, and you know, then I'll turn on my DS or my PSP. Um, but you know, uh, but as you know, back to these Facebook games. Um, again, like I said, it's one it's fun once in a while. Oh, yeah. I really don't play DS PSP games anymore because honestly, I'm just don't have it in me to review games like I used to. Oh, yeah. I'd much rather stream something instead of review instead of you know doing a whole video reviewing them. Yeah, or do a recorded for up to an hour and just up uploaded with commentary and, and such. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's why I also haven't done reviews uh, recently. Um, but at the same, so, but, um, yeah, so, like, the only time I play my DS, or, as a matter of fact, the last time I went out, uh, the power went out in my house, um, I was playing, um, Spider-Man Mysterio's Menace on Game Boy Advance. Okay. And, like, I finished three or four levels before the power came back on. Hmm. Nice. And then I sold that game, like, shortly afterwards. Okay, okay. But it was, it was, it was a great game. Like easy password system, so yeah. So, but that's back when, like, when I was had college and work, or just when I worked on the other side of the county from where I lived, oh, yeah. I always had my DS or PSP with me. Okay. Anyway, uh, moving on. <clears throat> uh, we talked about this uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, they during Nintendo Direct. They didn't. Well, they said they had one more character they were going to add right. um, before they finalized the roster. Hmm. Did you hear who they picked as their final character? No, I heard it from you. Well, that's about it. Uh, Sora from Kingdom Hearts, the protagonist from Kingdom Hearts franchise, is going to be the final character. Have you ever played the Kingdom Hearts series? Unfortunately, no. I've seen... The first time I heard of Kingdom Hearts was from the first Kingdom Hearts game I saw in the TV commercial. And that's when they show Zephyroth and Cloud. I was like, wow, they really incorporate those two characters into the game. And I was like, I always wanted to get the game, but I was too young uh, to buy it. I mean, I was still buy it. I was, I was only a pre teen when this came out. But uh, I couldn't afford it at the time. It was like, that's like $60, $50 for, the, for a PS2 game. So now years later, now you have these HD 1 and 2 remix or 2.5 remix trilogy. So they were buying that for the PS4, at least that. Because uh, it's not on the Xbox One really as much, if I recall correctly, right? So if I recall correctly... I don't remember them ever being on Xbox One. I think it's a Sony exclusive. Because Kingdom Hearts uh, 1, 2, and 2.5 HD has the, uh, what's well, called 2.5 remix. It has it's selling it for thirty bucks on PS4, and only only on PS4. So yeah, I know I know one point five and two point five came out on PlayStation Three. I never I think I think it's a Sony exclusive. Mm. Um, but yeah, so uh, Sora from Kingdom Hearts. If you remember my Let's Play on Daily Motion, I'm the one who was flipping out while playing it. Um, screaming, does is this game capable of explaining a story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of my uh, some uh, other subscribers of mine at the time did not like that because they were a fan of Kingdom Hearts. Right. And I'm like, you you asked me to play it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I I played uh, the other Kingdom Hearts games that didn't start off with Fetch Quest. And they actually look pretty good. They actually look like a lot of fun. So I am willing to give the Kingdom Hearts games another chance. Even even the first Kingdom Hearts, 
as far as Sora being um, the final character on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, um, a little underwhelm, a little underwhelming for an announcement. Honestly, in my opinion, I know people who love Kingdom Hearts are gonna love seeing them there. What they should but, have done, what they should have done, is include Sephiroth at the very last. Now, that would be because that was impactful. Everyone was screaming their reactions like, "Oh my God, no!" And then Mario you see him like being skewed with his with Sephiroth's sword. He's like hanging there like, oh. like that would be used for this last the, for the for the last. Since it was Smash Brothers character, Sephiroth, but to no avail. They didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, when I first heard Sephiroth was joining Final Fantasy. Um, not Final Fantasy. When I heard Sephiroth was joining Super Smash Brothers, I was like, "Are we gonna get other Final Fantasy eight characters like Squall? <laughs> you know, uh, to join." Super um, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Also, I wasn't thinking of Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. So, now Squall, that's uh, the character with the gun blade, right? Yeah, with yeah, he he was the protagonist in Final Fantasy VIII. As you can tell, I only played like five minutes or so. Of your footage on on stream for about a few minutes as well. So I never got. To, I, I actually uh, have it for Game Pass. Final Fantasy, but I never just to play that either. So one day I'll play it and record it online for it with you guys. See how it is. All right. Also, um, uh, since you, since you brought up your videos, I also want to talk to you. Uh, this wasn't planned, but uh, this is going to be a little spur of the moment thing. Uh, I saw I saw most of your video when you played uh, Alan Wake. Yes. Um, now I only got I know your video was like 55 minutes I only got to see the first 45 minutes of it because then BitChute was giving me problems with buffering mm -hmm. um, when you are when you come across someone that's covered in darkness don't shoot them until you've gotten all the darkness away from them like I saw you wasting 8 shots on a guy but it only takes like 3 shots to kill him you were, kill, you were shooting them while they were still protected by the darkness Really? You yeah. You have to when you I shine your light. flashlight. When you shine your flashlight at them, but it takes a few seconds for the flashlight to take away the darkness that's protecting them. I guess well, I, I I shine that big ass light on them, be like, halt, who goes there? And I shoot them like the, like cops would, you know. <laughs> I pull I pull the George Floyd. What do you expect? You know. <laughs> I know that's a, that's a bad bad timing. <laughs> that's good. I don't I don't think you could have come up with a joke in worse taste. Um, <laughs> what, you want to pull pull Abu Dhabi or or uh, or that or that Samantha whatever her name is the one that shot with a boyfriend that rape you know. <laughs> anyway, like uh, the point that I was making, uh, if you ever do get back to Alan Wake, uh, when you ha or like when someone. When an enemy covered in darkness is approaching you, uh, burn all the darkness away with your flashlight first, then shoot them. Okay. You'll go through a lot less bullets. How long should I let the, let the shine stay on there, though? Yes, keep it on them, and then, like, when they, like, hit, like when a flash happens, that means all the darkness has been burned away. <laughs> I hope none of our viewers go blind from that little stuff. <laughs> Just in case something happens in a uh, power outage, you know. Got to, <laughs> to say, add new batteries to the, the other day, so. <laughs> if anyone went blind because of that, you can sue Dr. Games 101. Yes! <laughs> Feel the suing! Oh! <laughs> okay, I'm actually speechless. <laughs> I can respond with a tasteless, tasteless joke, or we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> I watched too many uh, Flash Gets videos of the Xbox uh, PS PS Wars. <laughs> Flash Gets, guys, check them out. They're very good. They're very good comedy. <laughs> I'm actually, I actually want to tell this joke. I didn't come up with it. A friend of mine uh, from Nebraska that I know through Facebook and AOL came up with it. Uh, he said, uh, he, po he posted on Facebook... He goes, I just had, I just downed two energy drinks. 
Now I'm shaking worse than Michael J. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> One of his friends on Facebook will find back to him, What is wrong with you? <laughs> Well, at least he knows the joke very well, so that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if I talk to, like, 19, 20-year-olds, 19, 20-year-old gamers, they're like, huh? Who's Michael J. Fox? <laughs> like, they don't think about Back to the Future, guys? Come on now. You don't watch movies? They don't watch movies, most of my, my other group of friends there. They've been added to that shit, so. Well. <laughs> Back to the Future? Does that have anything to do with Marvel? <laughs> Well, Michael J. Fox was in uh, Back to the Future, so... Right, but I'm saying, you know, uh, people, younger people from today, if they, they watch, will probably would, they probably do not know what Back to the Future is. Well, they, they do. It depends on who you talk to, because it's a hand and mess, you know. Yeah, but Back to the Future 3, um, which actually is not so, so bad, yeah. um, she was the best that, came out, that came out in 1995. Mm-hmm. Many people, you know, so that was, what, 26 years ago? Yep. So if you talk to someone, like, in their late teens or early 20s, you know, they probably don't know, you know, Back to the Future. Yeah, you're right. Again, that's just, again, that's just well, speculation. Yeah. Maybe maybe yeah. I'm wrong. But here's the thing, though. When it comes to my, my life experiences, when I was 8 years old, I was watching... Dracula's Widow, a 1987 movie. I was watching Dracula from the 1960s and 50s. My mom, it was a VHS tape, by the way. And also I watched uh, another movie called um, Hollow's Night or or Werewolf or something. It was Werewolf 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Mom got the first 3 or 4 and they were like, whoa, like, this would be a before my time. So, thanks to my aunt, that's how I knew about these movies. Especially... Uh, the stuff. That's a science fiction movie about some um, vanilla yogurt turning people into monsters on the inside and open up their mouths and transform them into fucking monsters and shit. It was kind of weird. That's, I didn't know about that movie until until like I was 10 years old. And that takes my mind. You know? Then no one doesn't know anyone about this, this stuff movie until you refer back to the guy from the Jamie Foxx show who was the elderly guy. He died not too long ago, so... But yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about choosing the subject, but yeah, that's all. It's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's okay. It, uh, um, uh, but I do have to say, you know, a lot of us, um, or at least in my case, you know, I don't happen to watch many movies that were made before I was born. Um, there are a few movies I'm interested in that I never got to see. There are some movies I'll never try watching again. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, they scared the crap out of me when I was younger. <laughs> Well, but um, like, oh, look at that. That's so cheesy. That's what, that'll be you oh, oh, in your 30s right now. If you do that. If you watch those. Not movies. really, because, like, the movies I'm talking about are real horror movies, like American Werewolf in London. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> I didn't scare by it. I was like, whoa. Too much Too much I, 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 didn't, <laughs> I didn't want. I didn't even watch the whole movie. I was, uh,. Like, basically, when the guy uh, was in the apartment with that uh, chick, and all of a sudden he saw, like, a green figure, <laughs> and it was, like, a jump scare. Really? That's, like, the... I saw maybe, like, a minute or two after that, and I think... And I think I walked away from that, like, I can't watch this anymore. I'm... I'm <laughs> but well, then again, I was a child at the time. Well, if you watch a sequel, indirect sequel to The American Werewolf in Paris... That one is a is, a, is a comedy more than sc scary. It was that it was that it was that screwed up. That's how bad it was. Then it was it was the movie wasn't bad bad. It was just cheesy funny bad. You know, it's ridiculous. But the Mary Wolf alone that's a classic. There's also uh, Scream and uh, the um the uh, what's called Mike Mike Myers. I uh, was Halloween. Freddy Krueger's Nightmare Elm should only saw parts one, two, if not four, part of it in each movie. Then there's also Jason Voorhees, you know, of uh, Friday the 13th. So, we, if it wasn't for our parents, if it wasn't for our cultural references, 
wouldn't know about this back in the 90s and stuff like that. They saw our parents. So that's what I'm trying to say with the anyone under 25 or 20 years old. They're like, well, yeah, I heard it from my, from my mom and dad. And they share with me the movie for a few minutes, you know. That type of stuff, so. Yeah. The only Nightmare on Elm Street I saw, I actually saw one of them in theaters. It came out, like, uh, around 2010. Oh, the remake? Yeah. That's the only uh, Nightmare on Elm Street that I've seen. That's my, that's the um, Rob Zombie flick. The, the Rob, yeah, the, I Rob think Zombie so, yeah. Movie, Rob Zombie made that, that reboot, in a sense, or remake. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I've never I've never seen any of the Halloween movies. I've actually never seen any of the Jason movies. Now that I think about it, the most recent Halloween movie came out out last early this year, late last year. Uh, uh, they're movie. making a new one, a new Halloween movie. Yeah, when she's coming out of the hospital, the the, the chick, the the old chick. Yeah, they try to finish it once and for all, supposedly speaking, but that's yeah. not happen. <laughs> Because I gotta keep milking and milking, like, just let Mike Myers die, please. Come on. <laughs> he got his head cut off back in H2O 20 years later, back in 1990s, with uh, the rapper. Uh, you know, you know the rapper was part of that movie, you know? I remember, I, I remember uh, the trailer for that movie. How, I remember uh, it was H2O 20 years later. Um, I thought that was such an awesome name. And it's funny to think that the same villain they were fighting in that movie that was made while I was a child, they're now fighting in another movie. They're, they're, they're fighting in the same franchise, you know, they're still making... Uh, I, don't know, Jay, I don't know how Mike Myers survived that cut, cut off, the head chop off thing, you know. That was an H2O, yeah. so... Well, uh, in Freddy vs. Uh, well, that's Michael Myers, I'm thinking of Freddy vs. Jason, that's different. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess he just can't be killed. <laughs> he can, you can slow him down, but you can't kill him. I mean, that's like trying to cut off Jason Voorhees' head, and I don't, I'm not sure which one it was when his head got cut off. Maybe I'll refer to his mother, because the first Jason, the first Friday the 13th movie, his mother came to Crystal Lake trying to fight that teenage girl, but the teenage girl cut her head off, the, the teenage girl to that mother of Jason Voorhees, so... Well, that's when that's when Jason Voorhees got pissed after that. They started going rampant and killing everyone. Also heard uh, in Freddy vs. Jason that Jason's head got cut off at the end. Freddy's yeah, Freddy's head, Freddy Krueger's head. Oh, Freddy's head got cut off. Yeah, they supposed to bring it back, that and reboot with the Halloween and by Jason Voorhees, but they only did Halloween and uh, uh at the uh. What's that called? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street remake, if I recall correctly. So, so yeah. So, uh, but like I said, I, I would probably never watch uh, American Werewolf in London, even all grown up, because you know how they say the same things that scared you as a kid scare you as an adult. No, I was no. When I, when I was watching Back to the Future Part Two, that, this made me very stupid on, on my part. I was scared of the of the. My, uh, Michael J. Fox going into the all black man's family and it was kind of like a racial moment and I was heavily influenced by racial relations you know all the Malcolm X Martin Luther King Jr. bullshit going on back then you know and, and I think it's bullshit but it's like like the stuff that I was raised to the, the honor and to also because they make it look like the black man was like a demonic person or you know hit Michael J. Fox whatever with a baseball bat and all you know, that's I kind of like fast forward that part every time I saw it back to Future Part Two. But by the time I reached adulthood, like ten years ago, I saw the whole thing. And I was like, why did I did that? Why did I fast forward that part every time? You know. Say uh, when I say parts, that's I meant I said the same things that scared you as a kid scare you as an adult. Like uh, that guy that scared you know, I feel like, you know, like if I watch if I. I, if I watched a movie that would, you know, that scared me as a kid, if I tried watching it again as an adult, I'd probably still be scared. Really? Yeah. Um, again, but then again, uh, Unsolved Mysteries scared me as a child, and and now I watch reruns on YouTube when I have nothing better to do. <laughs> and it can happen 20 years after you stop watching some or experience something and re-experience it again 20 years later. Yes, that's what happened with me when that Back to the Future Part Two um, um, scene. Yeah, that's one of them. 
Um, then there's also uh, another one. Um, I can't remember it. That's how far back I'm going back. In. There was another part I kind of fast forward about. I'm not sure which, which movie it was either. It could be just Back to the Future Part 2, but, you know. Speaking of Back to the Future Parts 1, 2, and 3, which Back to the, uh, which movie is your favorite? The, my, my favorite Back to the Future movie is Part 2. Yeah, I... <laughs> even though you used the fast forward parts of it. Not parts of it, just that one part. When, if, if you remember correctly, and when when Doc and and uh, Marty got off, got off, got to his house after going, coming back for the future, that's the old Biff guy gave young Biff from nineteen fifties the, the the predictable book, like a, a book of predictions of the past, supposed past events of sports history and such. So he gave him a, a helping hand called a, a rich mongrel of the nineteen eighties and. All of a sudden, he sees this black guy coming after him with a baseball bat. He's like, I'm sorry, I thought it was my house. Like, you got the wrong house today, brother. Ooh. I was like, damn. <laughs> so, Mike Myers running. I mean, not Mike Myers. Uh, Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike Myers um, and Back to the Future 2. Marty, Marty, <laughs> Marty was running. Marty was running like hell from, from that household to his teacher's household. And the teacher's household was not really his teacher anymore because the future, the, the future of his, his current state of his future has changed, um, Marty. So he's married. He's 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 the uh, son of Biff somehow, some way. When he catch up with Biff, the 1980s Biff. That's how fucked up that was. So it was interesting at the same time to watch. So. Hey, I don't really remember the scene you were talking about. I've seen all three, I think all the way through. Um, I'll look for it on YouTube because they have uh, movie clips. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, those are good times back then. Now, now the movies of today, most people don't don't watch the Mad Max anymore during the week, especially on Fridays. Like, I'll probably go there like on a Thursday or a Tuesday matinee, and I'm the only one in the movie theaters watching Han Solo, um, Back to uh, not Back to the Future again. Sorry, uh, Star Wars Episode Seven, Eight, and Nine. Uh, Rampage I saw during on a weekend on a Saturday, so that was a good movie for some people to see at theaters. That was with The Rock and all. Uh, but other than that, Han Solo was the was worst. Like no one in the theater other than me watching it, and I'm like, wow. This is back in 2018 on uh, June, the the Mad Men uh, between Monday and Thursday. Like come on, are you saying to me there's no one waking up at for the 10 a.m. 11 a.m. Mad Men and doesn't want to see this good movie? I mean, Han Solo, you know, it may not be the best movie ever, but it shows how Han Solo became this bandit, this uh, mercenary, you want to call it, and he started working for the, the uh, for the rebellion and all. You know, that's pretty good. You know, being a Star Wars fan prior to that, you're not, you're not supposed to be no SJW, you're not supposed to be no feminist saying that it's all bad and good and stuff and, you know, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Just as an example as well. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I've actually watched a couple ma uh, movies, The Matinee. Um, that's how I saw Dumb and Dumber 2. Uh, that was a 20 years later in Dumb and Dumber. Um, Ted 2, I think, was a matinee. Um, and I think I saw one other matinee. I can't remember what it was, though. It must be uh, Terminator Genesis. No, it wasn't Terminator movie. I remember. I. I saw it. Let's see. It, let's see. It was. It was Dumb and Dumber. It was Ted, or Ted Two actually. Um. I just don't remember the franchise that it was. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, like when I went to the when um my mother and I went to the matinees uh for these movies because she wanted to see them too. Uh. There would at least be like a few people in the movie theater. Maybe like five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today's, today's theaters, you know, theater goers, they, they, they have it. Most of them. I'm going to a theater just to interact with the movie and see how it is on the big screen. Like, like we're traditional. Well, hopefully you are too, uh, Triple J, but I'm of a traditionalist when it comes to movie watching. So if I want to see it in theaters and it's going to be in theaters for the first time ever, I'll do my best to look for that experience. 
go to that experience. If not, then so be it. I'll wait until it's on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever. Um, yeah, you're basically going for the experience with the great screen and the great sound system. 4K, Ultra, you know, surround sound. Right. Dolby 7.1 now is 5.1. <laughs> but, ever, but ever since we've been dealing with this pandemic, everybody's trying. Everybody's making their movies for streaming services now, That's which really, you know, movie theaters weren't doing that well. That not that I know of anyway, uh, like they used to. So I think that was like a. Few, I think that was ha- going to happen sooner or later anyway, where we w- moved away from movie theaters and went to, uh, basically just streaming services. Hey, uh, Triple J, can you hold up for a couple minutes? I need to use the restroom. All right. You can see you're talking if you can. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I was going to move on to the next subject. I'll wait till Dr. Games 101 comes back. Um, yeah, but, uh, base, so, yeah, that was the, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think the whole thing with streaming services, uh, where you could stream different networks or whatever, whatever um, how movies are were released today, I think we were moving towards that. Um, I think we were moving towards that anyway, and the pandemic just hurried it up, uh, shifting over to streaming services like Netflix or Hulu or you know or whatever plus. Um, being how we watch movies nowadays. Um, hmm. So, yeah, we only got a couple more things left. Um, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. You didn't miss anything. I just I just reiterated that um, I think the pandemic helped us move towards streaming services, but if the pandemic never happened, I think we would have slowly moved towards more streaming services and less movie theaters anyway. Oh yeah, but here's the thing though. Um, there's more streaming services now than ever than it once was five, seven years ago. So prior to all of these Disney Pluses, uh, HBO Maxes, Apple TV, and then Apple Plus TV and shit like that, HBO, Roku, whatever, Roku and Amazon Fire TV, like, I don't know. It, it, it seems it seems like it's just it's just uh, uh, you're, you're you're milking people, people's money too much. Like let yeah, me, every Tom every Tom Dick and Harry has their own streaming service now. Yeah, I don't mind <laughs> the competition, but here's the thing though: you're spreading out the revenue, you spread out the popularity. So there's so many different streaming services for so many different types of movies. So if you want to watch Marvel, you're going to go to Disney+. Plus. If you want to watch independent films, you're going to go to Netflix and Amazon Prime. If you want to watch the old school uh, Betty Boop, the, the old, what's the old cartoon from the 1930s and 40s, you got to go on Amazon Prime Video for that and watch it for like two bucks per episode if they change every, anything, everything yet, for that matter. Because it was for free at one point, and I, I want to watch the other episodes. Or Betty Boop. So my point is, is that I just don't like the fact that I have to spend twenty, twenty-five dollars, up to thirty dollars for everything at the theater because I'm bungling by myself usually, and with maybe with one once in a while with our friends for the Star Wars movies, and all of a sudden we're like looking at looking at each other like, why are we spending so much money in the theater when we can wait until it's on on Netflix? But thanks to the competition going on. I can't f- watch all the Disney movies of the Star Wars or the uh, Marvel movies on Netflix. What's the point of having a Netflix if I can't have the newest movie that came out, the newest TV series that came out, you know, days after it came out on TV? Like, why should I spend eight, nine bucks a month for it? It's it basically, it's just what you're interested in. Um, that's what you have to do with streaming services. I don't know anyone that, like, has all of them. Yes, you're right. You know, because, I mean, you think that's, what, eight, nine dollars a month, but there's, like, what, 20, 10, 20 services out there? Each of them has no distinct content, and I don't like it. Right. So, uh, 
So I th I think it's basically just what you're interested in, you know. If you're not a big fan of superheroes movies, you then you're not gonna get Disney Plus. If you're not a big fan of, uh, well, I'm actually Netflix is kind of like a smorgasbord when you think of it. Something like that at first. At first it was. Um. Because <clears throat> now so because now they have these drama, lesbian, LGBT stuff. I don't mind. The, the, the all lesbian all gay movies but don't like pounce it on the front page thinking I'm gonna watch it I'm into I'm a straight dude I'm into the action pack like Arnold Schwarzenegger's um, Commando or um, fucking um, what's, the, what's his name Robert De Niro or Joe Pesci of the of what the other movies that came out recently I forgot what it's called but fighting the movies like from Bruce Lee and all Chuck Norris uh you know, all these people, like, I'm into that stuff. Why can't they bring that, most of that shit stuff back, back onto Netflix? And they're supposed to have that stuff already on Netflix. Now, and they used to have it, might, and it might be just, it might be just only available to certain countries. Yeah, that's the way it's a VPN, which is like, uh, what's the point, you know? They gotta find some way to manipulate that anyway. You know, because VPN... Well, you can with a VPN, but it's, but most people just use a VPN uh, for online protection. Right, of course. So I'm not anyway, extra, I'm not gonna spend extra five bucks a month just to just to what see. Right, well, just to watch movies that's available in a different country. Yeah, and, and I can watch it for free. That's that's what they don't understand. I can watch every single movie that came out on DVD or Blu-ray or in the theater right this second. I don't have to have Netflix. The reason why I watch Netflix is because you have certain ones that are, are free flow. Like every episode, every back to back. Like One Piece up until like 600 episodes. Uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus, all five or six seasons. You know, you have that available for you to watch gracefully. Now if I'm trying to go on the internet to find the piracy at all, it's going to be a hassle. But you got the convenience to bring this stuff back to the forefront of society and say that, hey, watch this without spending time stealing, you know? And I'll buy it. I'll buy the service to watch all these good shit, you know? So excuse my language. <laughs> okay. We got a couple we got a couple more things uh, to talk about um, before we end things for tonight. Uh, this one, I don't know if you still have more to, talk, to add, but... Uh, PlayStation 3 and PS Vita stores will not be accepting deposits from debit or credit cards after October 28th. Uh. Um, basically, this is the first sign of a digital store getting ready to shut down. Um, when the Wii shut down their virtual console, the original Wii, uh, they, were, they stopped accepting um, deposits from debit cards and credit cards first. Mm -hmm. And then the Wii store stayed up for like a year later, and then they said finally we're shutting it down. Um, I thought the PS3 and PS Vita store would stay up later, especially with the big, um, especially with the big uh, backlash that came from people when they heard the PS3 store was shutting down. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what what do you think of this? Uh, do you think they should just keep the store up and running the way it is now, or...? Well, if PlayStation 3 still have, like, DLC and other add-ons for the game to download directly from the PS Store, like games like from, like, Metal Gear Solid 4, or Devil May Cry 4, uh, games... Well, one of the games on PS3 came out, Resistance 1, 2, and 3. Like, if there's still DLC for these games, they should keep it on the store. Because if you can't find it anywhere else, and you're screwed. And you spent how much money to buy them back in the past? Fifty, sixty dollars plus the add-ons, like another eight to ten, fifteen dollars extra per DLC. Station uh, three store is. I don't know if the if that's gonna kill DLC. Although I think any game on the PlayStation three, the servers would be shut down anyway. Yeah. Uh, but the PlayStation three store is gonna would has like a PlayStation games that you could buy for like seven dollars each. So like. Like, I bought Medi Evil, Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2 digitally. I don't know how to save my game on the PS3. I can save it when I play it on my PSP. Yeah. Imagine that. But, you know, uh, that's that's what most people use it for. Um, I used it 
the PlayStation 3 store to buy PS1 games digitally. And that store is going to be shutting, uh, well, they're not going to be accepting uh, deposits from credit cards and debit cards at the end of this month. And I just, and it's it's a shame because that's the first, that's, like I said, that's what other game systems or digital stores have done when they were getting ready to shut down. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, DLC, but I think, like, if you wanted a DLC for, like, a PS3 game, you'd already be out of luck. Yeah. Unless, because I, th- I don't know many PS3 games that still have their servers up. Well, the PS2 lasted a very little time. Their servers lasted until, like, 2012, 2013, the latest. So yeah. So, if PS3, they came out in 2006 of their servers at all. So, by 20, what, 2021 this year? So, it's, like, not even um, 20, 20 years. It's just not even 15 years. So, that's uh, pathetic on, on Sony's part to leave it that close so early. Well, the game servers and like the PlayStation servers are diff- are are two different things. Like, uh, I have UFC Undisputed. I think 2010. Uh, I can't play that game online because the servers for that game have been shut down for a long time. Oh yeah. But the PlayStation Store on for my PlayStation 3 dashboard is still active. Um, it will be shutting down eventually. Um, but you know that's currently still up, so it's not. So this, I, I don't think this has anything to do with DLC. I think it was just basically digital games or games that were only available digitally to begin with. I see. Um, I I think it's a shame. I'd I'd say if they could keep these games up, why not? Oh yeah. Uh, because now it's just gonna make hard. It's people who want to buy these games. It's just gonna be harder to get these games. But then again, on the other hand, um, it's really not much of a service if I want to play Medieval and I can't even save my game. Good point. So, that's so... Um, so there's that. It's really and more news about Sony, although this is a good thing. Uh, we talked about... Uh, PlayStation 4 um, having problems with the CMOS batteries. When the CMOS battery dies, the system basically becomes a paperweight. Mm. Um, Sony has fixed most of those problems. So even if the CMOS battery dies, you'll still be able to not only play games, whether it's disc or digital, but you'll also be able to continue to get trophies. Right. Uh, what happened was um, when you couldn't play a game even or you couldn't play a physical game, you couldn't get trophies at all anymore. Once the CMOS battery died, hmm. they somehow found a they uh, found a way to remedy that. Um, the only thing is, when the CMOS battery dies, um, they have like um, they had the stats when you get a trophy on PlayStation Four. They would it would record the uh, date and time that you got that trophy. Now that information stays blank if the CMOS battery dies. But you can still get trophies that you didn't get before. I see. So, what do you think about that? Uh, a good thing from Sony. Uh, basically, most of the most of the things that we feared about these CMOS batteries dying, what happens when that happens? Uh, Sony has fixed most of those problems. Hmm. So they thought, so they fixed something, but not all the way through. Technically speaking. Um. Yeah. I mean. But then again, who really care? I mean, no one cares. Like, when we, we get achievements on 360 and Xbox One, none of us really care the date we got it or the time we got it. Okay. We just care if we got it or not. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, I, if I get a PlayStation 4 trophy, because I would get them on PS3, I never cared the date or time I got it. I just cared about getting it. And now we don't have to work. And now, say, we end up getting a PS4 five years from now when it's really cheap we won't have to worry about the CMOS battery in the system I don't know how they fixed it with the patch or if that's if that's what they did but the CMOS batteries will no longer be a problem 
and I think Sony deserves credit. They they took a bunch of fans' concerns and actually did something about it. But they're very, but most of these companies these days, they're very reactive instead so of proactive. You know, they, mm-hmm. they, they're not expecting uh, themselves to preserve their own creations. It's just about making the money short term or that's it. And if it's in the long term, it's like, who cares? Because we're going to be out of business decades after its release, you know? That's, 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 not, that's not the case, really, because, what, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, they've been around for decades. Especially Nintendo, they've been around since the 1890s. And by 1970s and as, as 60s, if not the latest 80s, they turned into a gaming company of sorts. Instead of a card company. Nintendo has been around since, like, uh, the early 90s. Nintendo has been around since, like, the early 90s. Nintendo has been around since, like, the early 90s. has been around since, like, uh, at least the 70s, because I know they made at least one Pong, uh, one Pong console before the Nintendo came out. Um, Sony has, Sony and Microsoft are newer, um, because Sony was originally supposed to make an add-on for the Super Nintendo, which never came through. Microsoft, um, came in after, like, the Dreamcast died. Well, I'm looking at it from a company's uh, history uh, standpoint. Like Microsoft. Oh, okay, because Microsoft, Microsoft was around with computers beforehand, yeah. Yeah, Microsoft what, created its first Windows back when the late 19, mid 1980s. So that's 40 years, almost uh, this uh, 2025, 2024, I guess. Yeah, so Microsoft was around with computers 2002, 2000. Around 2002 is when they got into video games. And that's when they started all that subscription services thanks to them, Microsoft, with the monthly, was it eight dollars was it what was it, ten dollars a month, then twenty five dollars a month, and then uh fifty dollars a year, some shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, the that's that's a, that sounds like the games with gold. It's like yeah, it's like um I don't know what I, I don't know what I don't know what the prices were um back like when they first started. Um, but it was like, I think it's like $9 a month, then like $25 for like three months, Mm -hmm. and then like $65 for like a year. Yeah. But it was always $50 for quite some time, up until the last last couple years of, uh... Oh, okay. Yes, I paid for it every year for, uh, uh, Microsoft's yearly subscription since 2013. And by 2017, 2018, when they transitioned to the PS4, Xbox One, now it's went up to $65 with the taxes, plus ta- with, inclu- tax included every year for the, for the mention of the one-year subscription. But now all of a sudden, it's going to, you know, if you, want the, if you want to get a bargain deal, you have to go on Amazon for the, the, the physical card, or if you want to right away, you got to spend $80 for two codes. Like, you got to spend $30, $40 for, for six months, and another $40 for six months put together $80 right there. It's like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I want to get the, the card for $67, $67 a year, you know? So... Okay, well that that's the uh, uh, that's all the things uh, we had to talk about. So this was the Let's Discuss Gaming podcast. Um, this was episode thirty one. Episode thirty two will be Octo- October October twenty third. Let me check my calendar. Make sure that's the correct date. Yes, uh, the next podcast episode number thirty two will be on October twenty third at nine p.m. Eastern. Uh, follow me on Twitch so you know when these podcasts uh, start so you can join us live. Um, so, and um, I guess, uh, and uh, follow me on Twitch because I do try to do streams. Um, follow me on and subscribe to me on BitChute because if I can't do, if I don't have the time to do a stream, I at least try to do a Let's Play. Um, anything you want to plug before we go? Um, not necessarily. I said what I said last last uh, podcast. So okay. All right. So hopefully, um, hopefully we'll see you for our next podcast. Till then, peace out. Peace out, home dog. <laughs>